With the concept of God being so drastically different between the Bible and Joseph Smith's teachings, one must wonder how Joseph Smith could claim that the Book of Mormon was another testament of Jesus Christ. Well, we cannot believe both the Bible and the writings of Joseph Smith when the Bible tells us there is only one God, and Joseph Smith tells us there are many gods, and we must become gods ourselves. Let's examine the teachings of both men on the afterlife. You just don't pay lip service to Jesus. You enter into him. You become a part of him. You absorb. You identify completely with his suffering on the cross, his resurrection from the dead, his claims to be the Son of God and therefore qualified to pay the price we could never pay. And once we believe in him in that deep sense of commitment, which can be instantaneous, in fact it has to be, at that moment we have eternal life. In Christianity, eternal life is a gift. It's the most radical understanding of how one goes to heaven, is resurrected, has eternal life in, in the religious realm. Um, by grace you're saved through faith. It is the gift of God. Why is it a gift? Because Jesus Christ did something that we couldn't do for ourselves. He died on the cross, satisfied God's sense of justice against sin, paid the price for our sins, was raised eternally through the resurrection with a glorified body. When we put our faith and trust in Him, repenting of sins and believing in Him, we receive salvation as a gift. That's why the thief on the cross could be saved. Joseph Smith's revelation in section 76 of the DNC describes three degrees of glory for all mankind and how to obtain each degree. The third and lowest kingdom is the telestial, the glory of the stars. According to Joseph Smith, this kingdom is for the liars and adulterers and sorcerers and whoremongers and whosoever loves and makes a lie. The terrestrial degree of glory is the middle kingdom and is inhabited by those who died without the law. They accepted Jesus in the spirit world. They are the honorable men of the earth who were blinded by the craftiness of men. The celestial kingdom is the highest kingdom. This is where God reigns upon his throne forever and ever. Having received his fullness and his grace, equal in power and might and in dominion. They are gods, even the sons of God. In Romans 6.23, it talks about although the wages of sin is death, the gift of God, the gift is eternal life. In order to gain access into the celestial heaven, Joseph Smith's revelation requires keeping the Ten Commandments, as well as all the commandments found throughout the three sacred Mormon books, be baptized into the Mormon church, tithe, get married in the temple, obey the word of wisdom, be baptized for the dead, magnify the church callings, and the list goes on. It is only by trusting him that we come to be able to enjoy the glory of heaven. I am the way, the truth, and life, and no one, not one person, comes to the Father but through me. There is no religion in the world that believes this except the religion of the Bible because every religion in the world says we just have to do something to contribute. We have to earn our way. We have to somehow please God with ourselves and our attitudes and our words and deeds. Impossible. According to the Bible, repenting of our sins and faith in Jesus Christ is the only way to gain eternal life. In John, Jesus was asked, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. In fact, the Bible refutes the ordinances in Joseph Smith's Articles of Faith by stating, for by grace you have been saved, through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Joseph Smith said, I have more to boast of than ever any man had. I am the only man that has ever been able to keep a whole church together since the days of Adam. Neither Paul, John, Peter, nor Jesus ever did it. 
I boast that no man ever did such work as I. The followers of Jesus ran away from him, but the Latter-day Saints never ran away from me yet. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. It is Jesus who has been building his church for 2,000 years. Joseph Smith's Doctrine and Covenants teaches that Joseph himself holds the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And if Joseph Smith holds the keys to heaven, then how can Jesus claim, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth? God's word tells us that there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. In stark contrast, Brigham Young stated, no man or woman in this dispensation will ever enter the celestial kingdom of God without the consent of Joseph Smith. In the Bible, it is clear that our salvation rests in the hands of Jesus Christ alone. Why? Because from the beginning, God's word tells us that the penalty for all sin is death, both physical death and spiritual separation from God. To pay this penalty, a person must be sinless, be infinite to pay the infinite penalty for mankind's sin, die as a substitute by shedding of blood to pay sin's penalty, and rise from the dead to defeat sin and death. No other person could do what Jesus did. Therefore, only faith in Jesus' death on the cross and resurrection can save a sinner. Can we know that we have eternal life? Scripture states, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God.